Hello everyone, and welcome to the tutorial for installing an e-bike front hub motor kit at home. The kit that I'm going to be installing today is a Pexmore kit from Amazon. The link for that is going to be in the description below if you're interested. And I'm going to be installing it on my wife's Mongoose mountain bike. She's getting the pedal assist system to extend her range so she can keep up with me better, pedal for more miles, and generally to give her an easier time going up and down hills. Now her bike is very unique because she is a smaller person so her bike is also smaller. The wheels are 20.5 inches in diameter. With the tire on it's 24 inches. We are at the smallest end uh, for an e-bike kit but the concepts are exactly the same if you have like a 27.5 inch wheel or a 30 inch wheel or whatever size wheel. The concepts are the same. So you should be able to follow along with this no problem. I decided to go with a front hub motor kit just because I like the idea of leaving all the complicated bits of the bike alone. She likes riding it, she's comfortable riding it. I didn't want to get into any complicated things and have to deal with the chains or like the gears and plus there's pros and cons to all different types of kits. Uh, this, however, is the safest one in my opinion when it comes to protecting all of the gears and workings of the bike and ease of installation. So this kit here, this is rated for 750 watts. They give you two nice cases uh, for the controller and the battery. It does come with a pedal assist system. These are uh, some wire covers. This is the controller that runs everything. New handlebars, including one with a built-in throttle. Uh, brakes, which are optional. I don't think I'll be using these just because the ones that are on her bike are fine, they match, they work. And the ones they give you in the kit are huge by comparison. And you don't actually need them, especially if she's using a pedal assist system. The motor will just cut out when she stops pedaling. So there's really no need for um, for anything else. The kit also comes with this LCD screen and this button controller for it. It has um, mounts to put it on the front handlebar here. Uh, this is her basket where she keeps her water. This isn't part of the e-bike kit, though I think I might have to use it for either the controller or the battery, which she's not gonna like, because her bike is very small and it's a woman's bike, so the center bar is much lower and there's not a lot of space in the middle to store the uh, battery and controller together. But you know, we'll see. Worst comes to worst, I could always put the battery in some kind of case on top of the bar here um, to solve that problem that way. So let's get going. So the first thing that I'm going to do is install the front tire with the motor. And uh, that starts with removing the existing wheel that is on the bike, very easy to do. And because this kit did not come with uh, a tire or inner tube with it, which is totally fine with me, I am just going to remove the inner tube and tire from the existing wheel and I'm going to put it on this one and then we're there. So I am going to cut back after I have done that. Very easy to do, just take a flathead screwdriver and use the valve stem to deflate the tire. And then also with the screwdriver, you can get under the tire and peel it off and get all the tire bits out of it. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to cut back. Okay, and now we got the tire on. Again, the process is very simple. You just deflate the air out of your existing tire peel it off of your existing tire, and then transfer it onto the new tire with the motor. And you're also gonna have to transfer your disc brake as well. For me, this used a Torx screw, which I had. All you gotta do is just loosen it up off of your old wheel, pull it off, stick it on this one, and the best way to tighten it so it remains straight and true is to tighten it in a star pattern. So when you transfer this onto the new uh, motorized wheel, you tighten this one, then you tighten that one, then you tighten that one, then you tighten that one, going in opposites so everything is nice and balanced. Now, when I did put this on here, nothing's really tight yet. You can use the washers that come with the new wheel to make sure everything is lined up. And more importantly, the brake disc fits into the brake itself and everything is more or less lined up in the way that feels most comfortable for the bike. And for me, I am getting some rubbing action here, which I will fix. That is actually very easy to do, and it's actually a trick that you can use on any bike to stop rubbing on your brakes, is on the brakes themselves, you have an adjustment screw here, and you have an adjustment screw here. 
There's also a screw here and here, which physically holds the whole brake caliper onto the frame of the bike. I would start with loosening this one and this one and spinning the wheel and jiggling this around until it doesn't rub anymore. And then when it doesn't, you hold it in place, retighten the screws, and then you're fine and everything is fine. Uh, you can also use these screws here. If you really need major adjustment, loosen them up too. Spin the wheel until it doesn't rub, and then hold it in place in that position and tighten the screws. Very easy to do, and I'm going to have to do that. But for now, the wheel is on, for the most part. Uh, and I'm going to tighten down the bolts that hold it to the frame. Now... I do recommend when you do this, use a decent thread locker, or if you don't want to use thread locker, go to like a hardware store and get nylock nuts. They're nuts just like this, but on the inside is a nylon like insulator, and that provides a lot more grabbing force to hold the wheel on the bike. This wheel is going to have a lot of torque because of the built-in motor, and you don't want it to adversely affect your frame, or worse, rip off the bike when you call for power. So making sure these are tight and stay tight uh, is the most amount of important. And that means using thread locker to keep them tight or nylock nuts to make sure that they don't vibrate off as you go riding. So I'm going to tighten these up, flip the bike back over, and then I'm going to start putting on the other parts of the kit. Okay, and now the screen is mounted and the throttle is mounted and the other handlebar is mounted. This was super easy. I uh, borrowed my wife's blow dryer. I heated up the existing uh, handlebar grips that were here. I Once they were heated up, I was able to twist them off. Then I popped these guys on, again, after heating, because it made it easier to twist them on. And once it cooled off, it was actually pretty solid and it didn't move. The other handlebar grip, which has the integrated throttle, actually is secured with this Allen head screw right here. So that was easy. Uh, this thing just slid on, I tightened the screw, and now it's a throttle and also a really good handlebar grip. Uh, her gears are completely unaffected. The bike's not moving, so it's harder to turn. But uh, these work fine. They're not affected by anything, including the one over here. I was able to reuse the stock spacers that came with the uh, old handlebars to you know keep some distance between the new handlebar grip and the uh, shifter so it's not being interfered with at all which is great and the lcd screen mounted here very nicely and the button control pad for it is right here uh, this adjusts the different levels of pedal assist that the bike will be offering this is solid these are solid and the only three things left to do is mount the control module in the smaller bag uh, right here get a, another bag or a hard carrying case to mount the battery right here, and then install the pedal assist system sensor uh, right here um, in line with the pedals. I think I'm gonna start with the pedal assist system sensor first. So I'm gonna go do that and uh, cut back. Okay, so I got the pedal off on this side of the bike. It's actually pretty straightforward. What you gotta do is, and I'll use the pedal as a guide, the pedal will be on this post right here, in like that. And in the middle of the pedal here is a bolt that looks like this. For me, it's 15 millimeter. For you, it's probably gonna be different. And it sits on there just like that, which is in the middle of this section here. What I did was, if you notice, it's a little greasy. I took some penetrating oil and I sprayed it all around and also on the inside of the uh, pedal right over here. That made everything that that made everything nice and loose. Then with the pedal still on like this, I took my hammer over here and I lightly tapped the back of the pedal right here which popped it off. Now with the pedal off, I am presented with this uh, lock screw thing here. It looks like a washer, but it's threaded. And these ridges here are meant for a screwdriver to go in. And what, what I'm gonna do is take my screwdriver, put it like that, lightly tap it with a hammer on this end. That will rotate this piece here 
over these threads that are right here and it'll pop this whole assembly off. Then I'll be able to take my pedal assist sensor, that's backwards, and I'll be able to put it on just like this, at which point I will then re-screw this thing on so the pedal assist sensor will be on like this. This will be back together and everything should be good to go. Okay, so I got this uh, threaded um, nut washer thing, I guess, off of here. The pedal assist sensor is gonna sit flush up against this and it's gonna provide the exact same dry seal uh, that this provided on its own. And uh, it'll be that easy. So I'm gonna put the pedal assist sensor on. I'm gonna screw this back on. And uh, that'll be it for that sensor. So I'm gonna cut back after I've done that. Okay, so I got the uh, pedal assist system sensor mounted. I put it right behind the uh, nut washer thing here, screwed it back on, and then I tightened it with the screwdriver and tapping it with my hammer. Uh, for this, I would recommend do it until light taps can't turn this anymore. And a light tap is like, you know, like like that, like a very light tap. Obviously, you wouldn't be tapping there. You'd be tapping on the back of the screwdriver up here. I just can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. So I would do light taps until it can't move anymore. Once it can't move anymore, you know that this won't come off. This won't come loose. And critically, there's a pretty good uh, dry seal between um, where the bearing stuff is over here and the outside world over here. And this is completely solid, firmly in place. It will not move, this will not move, it is it is in there. I also decided to put my sensor uh, on the top here just because I didn't want it hanging down where it could like, I don't know, get dirty or muddy or potentially get hit by anything. Um, so I just mounted it up here so it's out of the way of things. And uh, the next thing to do is put on the other side of the sensor. It's actually pretty straightforward. All it does is, is it slides in over this way, but you need to pay attention to the arrows. It is very important that the arrows point to the front of your bike and the direction of the pedaling. And in this case, they do already. So I'm just gonna slide them on like this, push it to the back as much as it'll go, and that's pretty much it. So now this part of the sensor will spin with the pedals while the other section that's behind this uh, bearing nut here with the sensor being down here. So as pedaling happens, it'll be able to sense it and it'll tell the motor uh, to start going based on whatever pedal assist level has been set. So the next thing to do now is to just put the pedal back on. Remember that the pedals are always 180 degrees of each other. So this pedal is in the up position, which means this one, I'm gonna be putting in the down position like this. So I'm just gonna slide it over, then put on the bolt. Uh, the torque for it, I would say, is snug. Just, you know, tighten it down to where it really can't go anymore. Don't overforce it. And that should be it. You should be good. So I'm going to cut back after I have done that. Okay, so the pedal assist system has been mounted. And dare I say, it almost looks stock. So the next thing to do now is to run all the wires. Because all of the major components that need to be put on the bike have been put on the bike, except for the battery, and now it's time to wire everything to this controller, which I will be putting inside of this bag that came with the kit, and I'll be hanging the bag from this part of the frame right here. And the battery, I'm gonna have to get a secondary bag or something to mount it up here like this. So that is pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna start wiring it up now. Let's take a moment real quick to look at the controller and all of the wires coming out of it right here. Now, the kit does come with this instruction booklet. It is pretty limited, but one of the best things in it is it tells you what all of the wires are. Just read what kit you got. My kit is the 750 to 1200 watt one with the LCD, which is what I have. So I'm going to be looking at this one here because the top one is for a kit with an LED or LCD, and the one on the bottom is for just the LCD kit. I'm assuming the LED is for like a front headlight or something, although both of these are identical, so it doesn't matter, but I'm still gonna focus on this one. And if you zoom in, you get a basic picture of what all the wires look like as well as what they all go to. Uh, now this is helpful, but also what's helpful is these are all color coded and for the most part they only plug into their counterparts uh, on the components on the bike itself. So it's pretty hard to mess up, but you do still want to use this as a guide. So it looks like the large yellow, green, and blue wire N, 
M and L go to the motor and K looks like it is a medium sized connector. So looking on the controller here, so this big red one is obviously going to the positive end on the battery. This is our yellow wire, this is our green wire, and this is our blue wire. So these must be N, M, and L. So these go to the motor, and it looks like this is our medium-sized connector here, which also looks like it goes to the motor. So if we look at the wiring harness coming off of the motor, here we have all the counterparts. Here's the green wire, here's the blue wire, here's the yellow wire, and here is that medium-sized connector. So very easily, those go to where they're supposed to be. And that's half the wires on this thing gone. The rest of it looks pretty self-explanatory. This thick black one is definitely to negative on the battery. This thick red one is definitely to positive on the battery. Very easy. So that's these wires done. So the rest that you really got to look at um, are these smaller guys over here. This looks like a pretty substantial connector. I would bet that this goes to the LCD screen which is right here. And if we look on the kit, yep, it does look like a substantial black connector goes to the LCD. And if we look on the wiring harness for the LCD, it does plug into that substantial black connector. Very easy. So then the only things left after that are these smaller connectors here. This one's pretty substantial. It probably goes to like a headlight or something. And if we look, that looks like connector C, which does go to a headlight. So next, after that, we have this three-wire connector here. And if you look very closely over here, that looks like connector F, which is for the pedal assist. And if we look, come over here, it's on the ground. At the pedal assist sensor, it is a three-wire connector. So that is for that one. Easy peasy. So now we're left with two connectors after that. Uh, and these both go to the brake levers, which I am not opting to use at this time because, like I said before, the brake levers are friggin' massive. And the ones on the bike are much better suited for the bike. And also, I don't think I need them because most of the time the bike is going to be ridden in pedal assist mode, which stops the moment you stop pedaling. So I think we're fine. And also there's this controller here, which can also turn things off in an emergency. So now that we know where all the wires go, I am going to start zip tying and putting everything together. And I will cut back after I have done that. Okay, and that is pretty much everything. So. What I did was, very basically, I just zip tied all the wires in place. I tried to keep it as clean looking as I possibly could. They come down this way. The ones for the motor, uh, I zip tied up going this way, went this way. I'll have to cut the tail off of this. But generally speaking, I tried to keep everything as clean as possible. I was able to get the bag uh, in between the frame right here. So, it was not easy. In this bag is just the controller um, because that's all I can fit in there. Like I said before, I'm going to have to find a different bag to put the battery up here. Um, but then it's just two wires that come out of the bag and plug into the battery. And that is pretty much it. I'm going to put the battery on and then I'm going to take it for a test drive. Okay, and we are now done and wired up. The battery, because I couldn't find a case in time, I put it in her front cargo uh, container. Here it is right here. That is the battery. Normally she put like water and some trail mix in there for herself, but until I find a battery case that I can mount to the frame right here, which is still the plan, uh, we're gonna have to keep the battery uh, in here and she'll just have to keep her water and stuff in her backpack. Uh, but for now, this is a uh, really good solution. Uh, I used 12 gauge automotive wire to extend the battery wires from the controller to the battery in here. Uh, I wrap them up uh, in this thing here. At first glance, it looks like it's electrical tape, but it's not. It's actually a flexible plastic braiding that came with the kit. And you just wrap it around the wires and it keeps everything strong and tight and nice and clean. Uh, I plugged the battery in and the screen came to life, showing that I have a full charge my pedal assist level here, which I can easily change with this controller that I mounted over here. And of course, the twist throttle works. When I twist it, the bike does want to take off. So that's it. This thing is ready to go. It is done. The only other thing left to do is take it for a test drive. Okay, let's see if I can film it.
Oh, let's go. Okay. It's quick. I am in throttle mode, not in pedal assist. I am actually going up a pretty decently steep hill, certainly more than anything that we would see on like a rail trail. And this thing is flying. The speedometer is working, although it isn't kilometers per hour, so I'll probably have to reprogram that. But my goodness, I am moving at a really good clip. I am a two, oh wow, this thing is fast on flat ground. Oh shit, okay, all right, time to slow down. Okay, <laughs> oh my God. This thing is fast. This thing is fast. It takes no prisoners. I mean, I am a 230-ish pound man. My wife is less than half of my weight. This is going to be more than enough for her and then some. I mean, oh my goodness. So I'm going to say test complete. Mission successful. Her bike is now completely electrified and everything is working great. Uh, the pedal assist does work. I can adjust it here. And as I pedal, the sensors do work and kick in the motor. And when I stop pedaling, uh, the motor turns off, which is great, which means I didn't need those uh, cutoff brakes after all. These are the stock brakes that go with the bike. So everything's great. It's easy to ride. And that's it. She is ready to go. Okay, so it is much later in the day and I have some feedback from the wife after our first ride. The first bit of feedback was the uh, handlebar grips and the throttle especially, um, they were way too big for her. Uh, she couldn't actually get her hands over to reach the brake. Now, she is very small, your wife may vary, uh, but she wanted the handlebar grips returned to stock, so I did. Also, the throttle, you'll notice it's gone. She hated the throttle. She would try and turn or hold onto the handlebars and she would activate it by accident, which would obviously activate the motor, uh, which frightened her greatly. Uh, so I also removed it and you can too, but uh, important to remember, if your wife also does not like the throttle, um, the kit can't run without it. Uh, when she first started having trouble with it, I tried to unplug it from the controller that didn't work. This thing absolutely needs to have the throttle connected to its circuitry to work. So what I just did was, and again, I am going to get a larger bag for here for the battery, but for temporarily, I just kind of threw the throttle in there. It's not going to do anything. It's just sitting there. Can't get twisted because it's sitting in the bag on top of the battery. Um, and that's it. Problem solved. She's only ever going to use this thing in pedal assist mode anyway. And uh, with the throttle in the bag, and pedal assist mode still on and working. She can pedal assist all she wants and it's fine. She'll never use the throttle, she said. So this was a good compromise to get the throttle off of the handlebar. Now, I am going to get her a thumb throttle instead because we mostly bike ride on flat ground, but the throttle's good because if you come up to like a big hill or something and the pedal assist doesn't have enough juice at its current level to get you up the hill, it's easier to just twist a throttle instead of having to click up on this a bunch of times to ask the motor for more power. But she hates the hand throttle, so I'm going to get her a thumb throttle. I'm going to move this over and put it here. And a thumb throttle is basically, it's a lever that sticks out and you just do it with your thumb and then that works as the throttle. So she can still grab the handlebar and turn and stuff without, you know, fearing activating the motor by accident. And the thumb throttle will give her extra power if she needs it. Other than that, um, it went pretty well. Um, anything above pedal assist level two uh, frightens her, so she's not gonna do it, but I kind of figured that anyway. With pedal assist level two, she can keep up with me, um, and it's not terribly fast. I'd say pedal assist level two is maybe eight or so miles an hour. Like, it has a speed limit, uh, and that's more than enough for her to keep up with me. And all the extra power that she's not using will just go into range, which, again, was the whole point of this kit. When I put it together, I intentionally made it overpowered so she'd be fine in any and all situations, and it would give her the most amount of range possible. So that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Have a great day.